Just when you thought I could not squeeze in one more roller coaster, you were wrong. Welcome to my realistic park build series in Planet Coaster, the park build series where I build a theme park as realistic as possible in my favorite game. I felt like the park was lacking in the kids department and figured it would be cool to incorporate one milder coaster meant for the younger audience, at the same time tying together the log flume area with a Mac multi-launch area. This coaster is just over 400 meters in length, with a ride duration of 64 seconds. The biggest drop is 8 meters and the maximum vertical g-force is almost 3. My building process for this type of coaster differs slightly from how I normally build coasters, and there is a good reason for that. Stick around and let me show you how I built this cool kids coaster. I start by placing the station so that it matches the surrounding queue and plaza with room for both the entrance and the exit. I want both the lift hill and the brake ground to align with the already existing build. Since I needed to tie together two of the already existing areas of the park with paths, I needed a path to cross under the track. I therefore had to keep that in mind when planning the coaster layout. I kept the track around 5 meters off the ground to still have safe space for people to walk underneath. Make sure to bank the turns enough to avoid heavy lateral G's that can be discomfortable for riders. There's a trick I use to get the correct banking I will show you in a bit. And now to the slightly different build technique, which I feel is necessary for this coaster type. I use shorter track pieces than I normally would. I now use 4 meter pieces instead of 6 meter pieces. The reason is that it is nearly impossible to custom support this specific track and still have it look nice and realistic. After the smoothing, I will, as always, select two track pieces, delete them and click autocomplete. However, when using the autocomplete method, the number of supports decreases. To avoid that, I use shorter track pieces so that I can make the maximum usage of the already existing supports without having to custom support any part of the track. I'm sure it will all make sense in a moment when you see it on screen. Run the train in test mode to make sure that the train passes the whole layout without slowing down too much. Then make the necessary adjustments to maintain a good speed throughout the layout. Now to the smoothing. I use the same method as I normally do. I select two track pieces, click smooth all three times before moving on to the next pair of track pieces. By doing so, I can maintain the heartline effect while still getting a smooth transition between different coaster elements and track pieces. When the smoothing is complete of the entire track, it is time to check the correct banking. This is how I do it. Take a closer look at the test result tab to the right. Place the cursor at zero on the lateral g-forces. Hold it still while the train clears the whole length of the course. Here you can see whether the g-forces deviate much from zero or not. If they do, it means that you need to adjust the banking to increase or decrease the angle of the banking. Simply go back to the affected part of the track, adjust the banking, smooth the track again, and run another test until the lateral g-forces is as close to zero as possible. Next step is to select two pieces again, delete them and click autocomplete. Notice how the number of supports decreases while using the autocomplete method. However, since I used shorter track pieces, there is still enough supports to distribute the weight of the train and its passengers. I cheat a bit and leave a few sections untouched, in places low to the ground where there will naturally be a lot of stress on the track, and therefore needs higher number of supports. I will now fast forward a bit in the building process.
Here is the final result. Enjoy! Thank you for staying until the end. Take care.